Hello, my name is Kang Lei. I am an undergraduate student at the University of Waterloo in Canada. The paper, the paper I will be presenting today is titled Computing Character Tables of Symmetric Groups Using Higher Order Permutation Representations. First, I will introduce some basic knowledge in representation theory of, group, of finite groups. Then I will talk about a classical construction of a representation called the permutation representations. Finally, I will talk about k-symmetric and k-alternative permutation representation, which is basically a generalization and innovation of permutation representations. Um, first, I will introduce what a representation is. Actually, there are two ways to define representations. One is a CG module. The other is a group homomorphism from G to GLV, where GLV here is a general linear map and V is just a vector space over C. These two definitions may seem completely different at the first glance, but in fact, they are exactly the same thing. The second definition is great here because with the second definition, we can define what the character is. Since rho is a group homomorphism from G to GLV, we know rho G is an element of GLV, which means rho G is an invertible linear map from V to V. Simply compute its trace, we finally get the character. Now we will see a really important conclusion here. It basically says that CG is always a semi-simple ring. By semi-simple, we mean that every CG module can be uniquely written as a direct sum of simple CG modules. Moreover, S is just a number of conjugacy classes of G, and chi V1 to chi Vs are just called the irreducible characters. For the sake of convenience, we just drop the V there and denote them by chi 1 to chi S. Uh, what's so good about the character is that it is always a class function. By class function, I mean it is always constant on, this, on, the, conjug on the conjugacy class. With this property, we can now define what a character table is. For a finite group G, the character table of G is a two-dimensional table whose rows correspond to irreducible representations and whose columns correspond to conjugacy classes of the group elements. Um, here is an example of a character table. It is the character table of the symmetric group S3. From now on, we consider the case where G is just Sn. In order to compute the character table of a finite group, it is often useful to construct new representations and compute their characters. One classical construction is permutation representations. Remember, we are now working in symmetric groups. We, which means that every element of the group is a permutation. Basically, the permutation representation sends every permutation to its corresponding permutation matrix. It is usually de denoted by chi p. Even though the definition of a permutation representation is abstract, computing its character table, computing its character is very simple with this formula. Uh, chi p sigma is the number of points in 1 to n fixed by sigma. Let's look at an example where g is s4. What is chi p? Well, we just uh, need to ask ourselves how many points in 1, 2, 3, 4 are fixed by the identity? All the points must be fixed by the identity, right? So the answer is 4 here. Um, for the elements 1, 2, we know only two points are fixed by these elements and they are three and four. And only one element is fixed by, uh, one, only one point is fixed by the element one, two, three. And the, the point is four, right? Four is fixed by one, two, three. So the answer should be one here. And for both one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, um, we know no points are fixed by these two elements. So the answer should be zero here. It's, it's very clear, right? Okay. Now we want to generalize the idea of permutation representations. For this purpose, we define symmetric permutation representations and alternative permutation representations. As you can see, the definition of symmetric representation is actually quite complica complicated. 
But the idea is actually simple. We define it rigorously to avoid some technical issues. And I don't want to pay too much attention on technical issues in this talk. So let's just skip it, okay? Okay, so now I want to talk about the main idea behind the symmetric permutation representations and the alternative permutation representations. Basically, we construct a free vector space over C of the form on the set of I1 to IK, where each IJ is an element in the set 1 to N. Again, the definitions of symmetric permutation representations and alternative permutation representations are very abstract. Computing their characters is actually very simple. For symmetric permutation representations, its value on sigma is just the number of points fi fixed by sigma. Note that the points here are not just numbers here now, but they are the sets. The, they are the sets of numbers. Uh, for alternative permutation representations, its value on sigma is the alternative number of points fixed by sigma. You might want to ask, what does alternative number mean here? Well, basically, if sigma is an even permutation on the point, we add plus one on our value. Uh, however, if sigma is an odd permutation on the point, we add minus one on our, in our value. Let me give you an example. In this example, we let g equals to s4 and k equals to 2. And we want to compute the characters of symmetric permutation representation and the alternative permutation representation. We know every point must be fixed by the identity element. So there are six points in total. So the answer should be six here. Again, let's see the, uh, let's see the character for symmetric permutation representation first. Uh, for the elements 1, 2, uh, what does 1, 2 do here? Well, it sent 1 to 2, and it sent 2 to 1. Its fix is 3 and 4, right? So two points are fixed by this, by this element, namely the set of 1, 2 and the set of 3, 4. And uh, for the elements 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3, 4, we can see that th there are no points fixed by these two elements, and hence the answer should be 0 here. Um, the element one, two, for the element 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, we know two points are fixed by this element, namely the set of 1, 2 and the set of 3, 4. Um, for the alternative permutation representations, all the points are fixed by the identity, so the answer should be 6 again. For the element 1, 2, we know 1, 2 and 3, 4 are fixed by this element. Uh, but the set, but on, on the set of 1, 2, it is an odd permutation. And the 1, 2 on the set of 3, 4 is an even permutation. Why? Because it is just an identity on the set of 3, 4. And the identity map is, of course, even, right? So we have a 1 minus 1, which is 0 here, right? For 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3, 4, no points are fixed by these two elements. And hence, the answer should be 0 here. For the element 1, 2, 3, 4, we know two points, namely set of 1, 2 and set of 3, 4, are fixed by this element. But this element is odd on both set of, uh, on both set of 1, 2 and set of 3, 4. And hence, we get minus 1 plus minus 1 here, which is minus 2. Uh, now we know how to compute the character tables uh, for symmetric permutation representations and alternative permutation representations. And they are very useful when we need to compute the character table of symmetric groups, if you trust me. <laughs> More details can be seen in my paper. Thanks for listening.